Hey y'all, Scott here, and happy independence. I would have said day, but I'm such a busy guy. So much so that I'm making my jack-o'-lanterns now so I don't have to in October. Pumpkins are hard to come by this time of year. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And... Did you hear that? Either I'm in a really shitty neighborhood, or it's Halloween. I can't tell you how excited I am for the season. I recently ate an entire f***ing pumpkin in preparation, and I must say I'm definitely more pumpkin than man at this point. And I also followed the simple 9-step plan to affirm that I'm going to rake in the most possible trick-or-treaters this year. It's absolutely foolproof. I'm gonna be having kids camping outside my house for the midnight release of this whole Halloween thing. Anyways, Halloween. Is a thing. So it's time for some spooks and scares to give us some jeeps and creeps. Let's talk about a game that is the cornucopia of brainwashing and suicidal thoughts. Yep, everybody's favorite, Polybius. Now you may be saying, Scott, so many other people have talked about Polybius. Have you truly run out of ideas? Well, yeah, just don't say it like that. So grab your nearest three month old rotten watermelon and lend an ear. On with the spook. 1981 back when arcades were an absolute humdinger. They were prime hangout spots for kids, even though they weren't the most ideal place in parents' eyes. As video games became increasingly more and more popular, many questioned if they had any negative effects on the players, whether that be migraines or behavior alteration. The US government noticed how video games could entrance a player and wanted to test something. They've already dabbled in this industry, as Atari built a specialized version of the game Battlezone as a training tool for soldiers. But this time, the government wanted to try something a bit more racy. They wanted to make a game that would addict and brainwash its players. This game was Polybius. Released only in Portland, Oregon for a short period of time, the unmarked black arcade cabinet would draw lines thicker than any other, with players absolutely entranced by the game. The game supposedly utilized vector graphics which make for clean, smooth lines. The gameplay of Polybius has been debated to death, however most have agreed Polybius is very similar to that of Tempest by Atari, released around the same time. The difference is, Polybius snuck in various subliminal messages in the game, which would flash at the player spontaneously. These messages, along with the addictive nature of the game, tormented players. The game reportedly caused many to suffer from sickness, nightmares, seizures, suicidal thoughts, and even death. After these incidents started happening, the game was quickly pulled from the arcade, never to be seen from again. I guess, I mean, I don't know, man. Polybius is one of the largest urban legends in all of gaming. Many aspects of the story make sense, but when analyzed, it all starts to kind of fall apart. The earliest known mention of the game was in 1998, when an entry for an arcade game entitled Polybius was found on coinop.org, where early tidbits of the legend were revealed there, commenting on the rumors floating around about the cabinet and how obscure it is. In 2006, a user by the name of Steven Roach made a comment on the coin-op entry stating he was an employee for the company Sinuslosion, the makers of Polybius. Sinuslosion is a fake German word that is a couple of words mashed together, roughly translating to sensory deprivation. According to Roach, the company was contracted by a South American business and he stated that he and his colleagues didn't know their own strength when it came to coding, as they weren't aware of the effects it would have on players. Coinop came back and stated that Roach's statement was false, but I mean, we're talking Polybius here, who really has the right to say what's true and what's false? The concept of a video game harming the minds of impressionable youth is nothing new. One of the first video game controversies surrounded the game Death Race in 1976, where it looked and sounded as if you were driving over people, while in reality you were driving over gremlins. This led to many asking if video games could inspire players to commit heinous acts in real life. Controversy revolving around a game's effect on a player has basically been around since the very beginning, so it makes sense that an urban legend surrounding a game negatively affecting the mind around this time period would exist. Various games were made to recreate the legend, however none specifically have any mind-altering effects. There have been numerous PC and Flash games based off of Polybius. Looking up the name on YouTube shows us multiple supposed gameplay videos of the game, but the vast majority of these were technologically impossible by 1981 standards. An Atari 2600 homebrew was created and sold exclusively at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. This actually had subliminal messages in it, well, as subliminal as you can get on a 2600 game. Most recently, a PlayStation 4 game that supports VR came out under the name Polybius. This was inspired by the legend, but it's primarily its own thing. The majority of these recreations and inspirations are shooters, which fall in line with the rumor of the game being similar to Tempest. 
but no matter how plausible you believe the legend of Polybius is, you have to admit there are loads of things that just don't add up. Why was the first mention of this thing in the late 90s? No records of Polybius exist anywhere prior to this. Why wouldn't any news organizations report on such a thing? A popular video game resulting in illness? Come on, you know the news would be thumping its foot at the thought of that story. Were arcade games really advanced enough to flash mind-altering subliminal graphics in 1981? Nowadays, sure, why not, but back then? Nintendo couldn't even design Mario's hair correctly in Donkey Kong the same year. Men in Black would reportedly come in to collect data from the machine and then immediately leave. What would they be collecting? How much people are playing it? More worthwhile data to check would be the effects on players, but the machine couldn't track that. Why would the US government conduct this kind of experiment in such a public area within an entertainment medium that was getting so much media coverage? Why would they keep this to private experimentation only? Sinuslosion, if you're creating a game that has mind-altering effects on the player, why would you name your company something that translates to exactly that? It's like if you're a serial killer naming your bicycle shop Murder and Ted's Bike Bonanza. Polybius could have possibly been confused with the arcade game Polyplay. The cabinet featured eight different games, which could explain the confusion of what game Polybius actually is, and was made in Germany, the language the supposed company Sinuslosion comes from. Polybius's name is taken straight from Polybius, a Greek historian who famously stated that historians should not report on something they cannot verify. Which, you know, is everything Polybius is. Something that can't be verified. The whole concept of Polybius has mostly been disproven, yet there still remains a fair amount of mystery behind the supposed game. It's highly unlikely it ever existed. Who knows, maybe someday it'll turn up somewhere. And that is why you lock your doors at night. You don't want an arcade cabinet following you at home. Now that is terrifying. Oh my god. If my calculations are correct, that's the Polybius alarm I installed yesterday, which means there's been a Polybius sighting within 10 meters. I think it's about time we try and wrangle this sucker up and see if it's the real deal or not. And I can't believe it, but it's finally time to start this brand new segment I've been wanting to do for quite a long time. Elusive Demonic Arcade Cabinet Chasers. On this episode, we're going to be trying to find Polybius. And on the next episode... Now, of course, Polybius' main function was brainwashing impressionable youth, so catching it is easier than you may think. What can I say? I just get Demonic Arcade Cabinets. <laughs> It's been about a solid five minutes past the amount of time anybody should be hunting for demonic arcade cabinets for, and I'm about ready to call it quit. Looks like we got a live one! Fucking boxing told me this thing would catch anything and everything. I hate when this happens. Luckily, I was diagnosed with a little thing I like to call street smarts. Shit, that smells like hypnosis. Ugh. Elusive demonic arcade cabinet chasing 101. Never burn a cabinet's wood. The spirit's annoyingly released after that. Now you have to find some form of containment for it. That watermelon contains one of the most horrific spirits ever conceived. I had to lock it up for good, so I sold it to some jank thrift shop. Alright man, why don't we buy a rotten watermelon off of that guy? Get that thing out of here! 